Many pilots are confused by the terms RNAV, RNP, and RNP approach that appear on instrument approach charts, and it's easy to see why. Although ICAO is adopting a new naming standard as the world shifts to performance-based navigation, or PBN, the FAA is sticking to its conventions. And that approach leads to some terms having more than one meaning, or to blurring important distinctions. Here's a closer look at what those abbreviations, initialisms, and notes mean. First, some background. As you probably know, the aviation world is moving to performance-based navigation, or PBN. The basic idea of PBN is defining the standards required to navigate during each phase of flight, and then using any approved technology to meet the accuracy, precision, and reliability required to meet those standards. The core idea of setting standards for different phases of flight has been around for a long time. We've used VOR-based airways for en route navigation since just after World War II. VOR airways are typically 8 nautical miles wide, 4 nautical miles each side of the centerline, and the ground-based nav aids are placed along the airway to ensure that the angular courses they transmit can accurately define each segment of a route. Minimum altitudes are established so that aircraft can reliably receive the line-of-sight signals and stay in the lane that ensures they'll remain clear of obstacles. That idea of roads, some relatively wide and straight, others narrower and sometimes curved, has a new name under PBN, Navigation Specifications, or NAVSPECs. The basic NAVSPECs that we GA pilots use under IFR are described in the AIM and other guidance. The NAVSPECs are in turn defined by RNAV or RNP values, which we'll see again shortly when we take a close look at chart titles and notes. For now, just understand these basic NAVSPECs. In route, the lanes are 4 nautical miles wide, 2 nautical miles each side of the centerline. When flying the initial stages of an approach, or a missed approach, the defined path is 2 nautical miles wide, or 1 nautical mile each side of the centerline. Along the final approach segment, from the final approach fix to the missed approach point, the lane is just 0.3 nautical miles from the centerline to the edge, or 0.6 nautical miles wide in total. Here's an important point about performance-based navigation. As we've seen, the specifications for VOR airways were established with the limitations of VOR nav aids and receivers in mind. PBN, however, is a set of standards, and it's not dependent on a single technology. Under PBN, you can use any approved system to fly the routes and procedures associated with a particular nav spec, terminal, in route, or approach. As new technologies are developed and approved, they can be used to fly the procedures defined by a particular nav spec. The procedures don't need to be changed or renamed just because new navigation hardware is in use. At present, several types of navigation systems can meet certain nav spec requirements. For example, the multi-sensor FMS boxes common in business jets and airliners typically use multiple VOR DME inputs and GPS to calculate the aircraft's position. Inertial reference systems, today found mostly in airliners, also may meet the RNAV requirements. But for those of us flying typical light GA aircraft, a suitable RNAV system that meets the PBN nav specs is an approved panel mount GPS or GPS enhanced with WAS. Now let's return to the procedure titles and notes that cause so much confusion. Here's a typical GPS approach the RNAV GPS Runway 20 at Bremerton, Washington. Note the procedure title, RNAV GPS Runway 20. That form has long been the FAA standard for approaches based on GPS and GPS enhanced by WAS. RNAV declares that the procedure depends on your ability to navigate point to point on your own. GPS in the title states that you need an IFR approved GPS to fly the approach just as ILS, LOC, or DME in the title of a conventional approach declares the type of equipment required for those procedures. This naming scheme has worked well since GPS became a standard navigation system for IFR. But what about those all-cap letters, RNP approach, lurking in a box just above the procedure notes? It's a shorthand way to tell you that this procedure was designed with the RNP approach nav spec in mind, and it's just another way to tell you about the avionics and capabilities that you need to fly the approach. But what does RNP approach mean? 
an explanation in the aim helps a little. The key point is in the first two sentences, which may seem redundant. After all, we just saw that the procedure title, RNAV GPS, tells you that an IFR-approved GPS is required. The next sentence provides more specifics about the RNP approach nav spec. And a table from the AIM offers more details. The detailed RNP approach nav spec criteria are 1.0 nautical mile for segments until you join the final approach leg and 0.3 nautical miles along the final approach. In other words, to fly the RNAV GPS approach, you need an IFR approved GPS that can provide guidance within one nautical mile to fly the intermediate segments, the missed approach path, and the holds defined for this approach. And along final, your GPS navigator, formerly known as a suitable RNAV system, must be capable of keeping you within at least 0.3 nautical miles of the leg between the final approach fix and the missed approach point. If an approach like this procedure has published LPV minimums, then your system must use WAS and be approved to fly the tighter angular course that narrows like a localizer as you approach the runway. The avionics and displays also must be able to show the approved vertical guidance, a glide path that mimics an ILS glide slope. In other words, the RNP approach note states what's been true for years. But if that RNP approach note doesn't change the long established requirements, why has FAA added it to familiar RNAV GPS approach charts? The answer depends in part on another set of letters, ICAO. The International Civil Aviation Organization decided many years ago, and for several good reasons, to adopt a new naming scheme as the shift to PBN gained momentum. By the end of 2022, most countries that are members of ICAO will change the titles of RNAV approaches to reflect the fact that PBN procedures are based on NAV specs, not specific technologies. As this table from an ICAO document shows, a chart titled RNAV GPS Runway XX will be renamed RNP Runway XX because in theory the procedure could be flown with any approved navigation system that meets the RNP approach nav spec, not just with GPS. I'll discuss the bottom row of this table a bit later. Here's an example of a typical RNP approach in the UK that uses the new naming scheme. The title of the approach is RNP Runway 27, and the prominent note in the box confirms that the procedure requires equipment that meets the basic RNP approach nav spec, just like the RNAV GPS approaches familiar to us in the US. In theory, you could fly this approach with any avionics that meet that specification. In practice, for a typical GA pilot, it's a GPS-based procedure, at least for the foreseeable future. But using RNP in an approach title presents another problem, at least for pilots using procedures published by the FAA. Here's the chart for an RNAV approach at Seattle-Tacoma International Airport. Notice that the title of this procedure is RNAV RNP Zulu Runway 16 Right. You probably have learned that the letters RNP in an approach title mean the procedure is something special. And you're correct. In the U.S., the letters RNP in the title mean the procedure isn't for general use. In fact, as an all-caps note at the bottom of the chart declares, this approach is an Authorization Required, or AR, procedure. It's like a CAT-2 or CAT-3 ILS. You can't fly it unless your aircraft has specific equipment, including, for example, a radar altimeter. And to be approved to fly it, pilots must complete special training and meet additional currency requirements. Because these AR procedures are special, flown mostly by the airlines and some business jets, you probably won't even find them in the database stored in your GPS navigator. Under the new ICAO chart naming scheme, Charts for authorization required procedures include AR in the titles, as shown in the lower right box of the table. So why doesn't FAA adopt the new ICAO standard? Doing so would reduce some of the confusion caused by using terms like RNP and RNAV for different purposes, often on the same chart. The explanation is in a document FAA published in 2016. The FAA says that changing the titles of thousands of charts would be too cumbersome and costly. The agency does have a point. 
At the end of 2021, the FAA had nearly 7,000 RNAV GPS approaches in its inventory. Updating them all to the new ICAO standard would be a challenge. For now, we'll just have to read the titles and notes carefully. In the meantime, however, additional complications are appearing on instrument charts. Consider this ILS approach at Reno, Nevada. It's an ILS that includes RNAV elements, and a note declares that an RNAV-1 GPS is required to fly it. The plan view shows why. Some feeder routes begin at and include legs based on RNAV fixes. ATC could clear you via one of those routes, or you could get vectors to join the final approach course. But more importantly, the entire missed approach procedure is based on RNAV waypoints and courses. You can't fly the miss without GPS. That's the reason for this RNAV-1 GPS required note. The procedure doesn't have an RNP approach note, however, because this approach does not conform to the RNP approach nav spec. It's just a conventional procedure that includes RNAV elements. So far, there aren't many such procedures in the U.S., but you can expect to see more in the future. The ILS at Reno does include another curious element, the arcs that lead to the final approach course. Those arcs are RF, radius to fix legs, and they add a complication to the RNAV, RNP, GPS mix. RF legs look like familiar DME arcs, but they are an RNAV GPS feature, and not all IFR GPS systems are approved to fly them. Until recently, RF legs were included only in authorization required procedures, such as this approach at Boeing Field in Seattle. The chart for that approach includes notes declaring that it's an AR-only procedure. Today, however, the Garmin GTN series, for example, can support RF legs, with some limitations. Those conditions are described in the Airplane Flight Manual supplement for the GTN series, and for other systems, such as the latest G1000, with the appropriate software updates. The supplement for the GTN series notes that you can fly an RF leg that's part of a procedure if you don't fly faster than 180 knots indicated airspeed, the RF leg is defined to the RNP1 standard, that is, one nautical mile either side of the center line of the arc, you have an electronic HSI that auto slews as you fly around the arc, if you hand fly the RF leg, you must use a moving map to help you maintain the track, and the active leg must be prominently displayed, as on a PFD. The equipment for flying an RF leg looks something like this. Other combinations of electronic displays also may meet the requirements. I'll end this discussion on a hopeful note. FAA is preparing to publish a new advisory circular, 90-119, that consolidates and updates guidance on PBN, RNAV, RNP, and other matters in one document. I posted a detailed review and comments on that AC at my blog in May 2021. The agency is reviewing comments on the draft, and we should see the final version by early 2023. Thanks for watching. You can find more information about IFR flying and other topics at my blog and YouTube channel.